Okay, we're joined today in the performing club by Bree Mills, the Chief Creative Officer at Adult Time, easily one of the top, actually, I think the top uh, studio right now in the adult industry. Uh, Bree is just, and, and her crew are just, you know, setting the standard in, in so many ways um, it, with, with their content. And, you know, Bree, a, a real hot button issue, uh, especially in these last few months, I mean, it's been a big issue for a couple of years now, but recently in these last few months is, is consent. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of performers complain about things that ha- are happening on sets and even in their own self-produced comment uh, uh, content. Kind of what's your what's your take, first of all, on, you know, what we're seeing out there on Twitter and what we're hearing from, from performers right now and, you know, mm-hmm. that issue? Oh, well, absolutely. Um, I've had to sort of evolve my own relationship with with social media over the last few years, as, as we all have, as it's become an increasing, an increasingly large part of our, our lives. And, um, so I actually don't interact very much on social media anymore. I, especially Twitter. I, I found that for my own, my own uh, mental health, that it was good not to dive too deep down that rabbit hole. But that doesn't mean that, you know, certainly don't keep, um, our eyes and our ears open to it. And so while I haven't necessarily been participating in conversations, um, certainly, you know, like everyone, I'm very aware that these conversations are are happening. And, uh, you know, I look at the last five years within our industry as a period of really radical and essential change, you know, um, like, 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 like anything, you're not going to stay the same way or operating the same way forever. And change is almost always brought on by necessity. And I think certainly the transformation of the adult industry is necessary. And we're right kind of in the middle of this multi-year transformation. Mm -hmm. So I feel really grateful that conversations are being continued uh, to be had not just in so on social media, but more importantly, offline and, you know, just above and beyond the echo chambers that we create for ourselves with social media and, um, our, our own evolution and our own transformation is also one that is, you know, underway and and that we've been actively working on for the last few years, um, we introduced, we began to introduce a sort of a version one of consent management uh, back at the beginning of 2019. At the time, we were very motivated by conversations we were having with talent and what we were reading and and seeing online as well. Uh, And, you know, since that first iteration, it's been a steady and continuous um, growth and optimization on our part. So, uh, I'm really happy to be able to speak to you today about how adult time really regards consent, not just as a key ingredient to the relationships we hold with everyone that we work with, especially the talent that we work with, um, but how it's really become the very central nervous system of our entire production operation. Um, and uh, that goes not just on the day of set, but of course, before, during and after uh, each production that we produce. So I'm, I'm very happy to be able to share where we're at now and yeah. hopefully inspire some conversations about where we can continue to grow and certainly how we can stand alongside our other peers in the space as companies to, you know, continue to, to do good work in, you know, on our sets and, and not just online, but more importantly, offline. Right. Before we get into your, to your practices, specifically your doings. I know people are curious about that. And that's the main reason we're chatting today. But first of all, when you, t- when you say you've talked to performers and, you know, a lot of what you do is based on their feedback, what are some things you've heard from them over the last year or two as you start implementing things that made you think, hey, we need to do something? Yeah, well, I think, you know, the, the, the most important thing is, is having an opportunity to regularly check in with each other. And when I say, you know, we've had, we've been gathering feedback from talent. It's not myself as an individual or any one individual member of our team. It's really like our, the way we've designed our entire operation. So, 
Um, cool. We check in with every single performer that works for any one of our productions. Doesn't matter who the producer is or what the project is. Um, we have a dedicated staff that follow up with every performer and use a variety of different means of communication, be it we have surveys, we have focus groups, we have direct uh, relationships uh, with many performers. And for us, the first thing we're always asking is, what what did you like that we could double down on and, and what could we do better? And you know, every single piece of feedback is precious to us. Uh, and uh, we always sort of circle back on the notes we've been given and, and, and look at that as a call to action for what we can do next. So, you know, one of the, um, I'll give a couple of examples of, of things that have come out directly from uh, our feedback loops with performers. One of the earliest ones um, was, you know, at the very beginning of 2019, uh, there were conversations happening online. Certainly we were also, in, you know, involved in really a, a period of reflection on how we could do better. And one performer had said, I don't remember who had said something about the importance of consent conversations, not just happening or not being just left to the device of, of the two or however many performers are involved in a scene, but really it's the responsibility of the director on set to also be part of those conversations. And that was a very, as simple as it, as it was, it was extremely eye opening to me. And I, 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 I could visualize that tweet in, in, in my mind to this day because, you know, definitely that individual was 200% right, you know, and, and what, what we've done in the years since is not only like put in various sort of processes and, um, and tools to help support facilitating that conversation on set, but we've made it mandatory, not just for our directors to participate in those conversations, but it, for really to be like a team meeting on the day of set with, all cast and crew because everybody has a responsibility for understanding what we are going to do that day, how we are going to navigate the day, because of course consent is an ever evolving thing and what we're all collectively responsible for doing. And so that was directly inspired from, you know, somebody speaking up during one of our sort of larger community conversations about, you know, who should be involved in those. Um, we've made multiple changes to our consent checklists and our head to toe body scans we do uh, with uh, all the talent on set, um, including discussing one thing I think is really important is not just the rules of, of engagement in terms of what everybody feels comfortable doing within a sex scene, but even within a production day, making sure it's really clear, you know, we, we do not expect or, or, or condone or, or wish for anybody to be in a negative situation on set. And, and the only sex that should be happening on a set is what we've agreed to in the sex scene, not necessarily like off in the hallway or, or in a, you know, so even, even looking at, you know, making sure that we're looking at the entire day and that that entire day is being conducted and run, you know, professionally uh, and, and to kind of alleviate as much as we can any gray areas that, that talent may find themselves in otherwise. You know, that's something that's been a, a recent initiative of ours, I would say over the last six months, uh, and one that we've received a ton of positive feedback from talent on. Yeah. You know, I've been on uh, adult time sets several times, thanks to your gracious invite. And I've always just been so impressed with the emails that you send out. Um, I mean, not, you include me on the emails, the call sheet emails and how detailed they are and how you ask for these performers to tell you if they questions, if there's things they're uncomfortable with, and then after the scene is shot, uh, you encourage them to follow up with a, either it's a survey or just any sort of feedback they have on their experience. It, it definitely seems like you're going a long way to really make pe uh, people feel so comfortable and safe. And, I, and in turn, I'm sure that really impacts their performance, them, you know, relax and, and kind of give their all. So, mm -hmm. uh, Well, one of the things that for me, like, uh, again, that did come from feedback from talent was, you know, our kind of collective goal at adult time is to do everything in our power so that consent begins the second a project is initiated. So before, well before, sometimes months before, you know, the actual production day, 
um, making sure that they are given access to all the information about a scene from how it's titled to any anything in the scene or in the requested sex acts that really should be pre-consented uh, and uh, as much information as we can give so that our hope is that nobody ever shows up on our sets not being fully aware of what they're showing up for and in full agreement that it feels like it's the right project for them, who their co-stars are, having ability to have conversations leading up to that production. That's really a, a huge part of when we look at our overall relationship with managing consent alongside the performers we work with. It starts, there's so much in that before the shoot that has such an impact then on the actual shoot day. And as you said, it leads to better experiences better pairings, better project fits, and an overall better performance from everybody. So it's it's a real win-win situation. Now, the thing that's, that's really stood out to me, and, um, and I noticed this probably even like a year ago when I went on one of your sets, is just the consent talk that happens probably about an hour to an hour and a half before the scene, maybe a little closer, maybe 30 minutes before the scene. Um, you know, and, and I've been on other not saying there's no such thing as another consent talk, but it's usually very brief. Hey, you good with you good with a little slapping, or you don't like your hair pulled? Let's shoot. You know, whereas you know the adult adult time is um, you know doing a, a you know about a fifteen to twenty minute conversation that's recorded, where you you kind of go over what you almost say like a head to toe body. Kind of kind of give listeners here uh, a rundown of, of what all that entails. Yeah. So. You know, again, for us, we look at the before, during, and after every production as being like all equally important to how we manage and, and support consent throughout our projects. So pre-shoot is very much about information sharing and, con and communication and making sure that, you know, we hold everybody that we work with up to the same professional standards as they should hold us. So we expect the agents we work with to properly communicate this information. We expect the talent that we work with to, to also look at the information and know they have a voice and to talk to us. So on the day of set itself, again, hopefully to the best of our ability, everybody is there. They know, they know why, they know who, they know what, they know all the details. Um, but as you mentioned before, at a bare minimum, before the sex scene starts, but increasingly what we're training our producing teams to do is really look at the kickoff meeting we hold every day with, with, with our cast and crew to be able to initiate the consent discussions even at that point. So we like to bring everybody together. Uh, we'll do, you know, an introduction, roundtable. Uh, every producer has their own style, but we all essentially uphold the same standards of making sure everybody knows who everybody is in their roles on set, their, their pronouns that we really reiterate adult times commitment, you know, to the inclusivity of our, of our projects. And um, to also clarify again, our expectations on set, you know, in terms of when to turn it on and when not, and, and you know, what, how we're gonna work with each other. Cause oftentimes, even though a sex scene might be a few hours into a day, there might be a part of, of a dialogue sequence that does involve some intimacy. And again, we also want to make sure people understand when we're not rolling the cameras, what we expect of them as well in terms of their conduct and what to do and what not to do and what everybody feels comfortable with. So it's really good to do it as early in the day as possible. And then, you know, it sets the tone for the entire rest of the day. And, you know, for me, I, I, I as, as our, you know, kind of CCO, I really am looking at how can we take our brand values and integrate them through our entire experience. And to me, that is the best opportunity for people to understand what adult time is all about. And so, you know, we share what our vision is. We talk about doing porn differently. Uh, and then we spend time going through, uh, we do provide every talent with um, a, a checklist. I'm happy to actually share copies of it with you if you want to include that with this interview. Um, and it, it allows every performer to spend some time before the discussion listing any uh, no's in terms of sex acts, in terms of language or particular words, in terms of themes, um, any notes for their scene partner that they want to share, their yeses, because that is equally important, right? We want to know which, what you really enjoy doing and how we can bring that into the scene. We always have our commitment to how we want to run our sets, like on every single one of those consent decks so that we can also reiterate that talent can also see that. 
Uh, and then we do have a, a literal head to toe scan where once we've gone through everybody's yeses and nos, then we'll go one more time from head to toe because, you know, there's so many details that when you're thinking about what to, to write down, you may not think of, but then when we really thoroughly check, you know, do you have extensions? How do you like your hair to be handled during a scene? Did somebody give you a, a wet willy once that like yeah. you never want anybody going near your ear again, you know? And we literally go through, uh, you know, every major part of the performer's, um, you know, uh, body. We talk about fluid exchange, what people are comfortable. We talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, lube preferences. We talk about, you know, try to really cover as much as we can. Uh, and then, of course, throughout the day, uh, we check in. And then before the sex scene, we will go back and kind of reconfirm you know, how everybody, everybody's knows and making sure that we can kind of reiterate that. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned that we record it and I, and, and I think it's important to explain, you know, why we're recording it. So for us, it's, um, it's really, you know, we have our, our own internal team and then we work with different producing teams. And I always say very transparently to our core crews, that is the most important piece of footage that you are going to film on your day. It doesn't matter the budget. It doesn't matter the series. It doesn't matter the project. That is the most important part of the day. And the reason we ask our crews to film that is because that is the first piece of footage that our internal team looks at because, you know, we want to see not only that it is being done, but we want to see how it is being done because for us, again, it's like that, nucleus it is if, if we get that right and if we can continue to build upon that that ricochets into every other aspect of our experience but if we're not nailing that well then you know that's that's always going to be our first priority to focus on so uh that's um it, it's it's i say that's where we get to be that's where we are big brother with our crews and they yeah. they know it and so you know they're they're our representatives and on the ground so they definitely you know take that part very very seriously right yeah it was just so impressive to to watch and it literally is like i had to tell i mean they literally uh i was like Susie q and michael vegas thing, and they literally asked about to and all the way up to the, to the head and it was you know and it was it was interesting to see one girl had a sore ear that day because she slept wrong and that's important yeah. but besides just you know body parts and stuff i mean safe words were discussed and hey if you feel uncomfortable yeah. in a certain moment and that you don't want to cut maybe you do a tap or if you don't want to cut how to do it and if we if we think that you're Butt's getting a little too red from slapping and we know you have a scene tomorrow maybe we'll stop it because we're looking out for you because you mentioned that so all really impressive stuff. Something else that Michael Vegas said to me that day that maybe you could account that consent isn't it goes beyond the body parts and the and the physical stuff. I mean it's it's um, you know, we're not we're gonna try not to keep you there for eight hours and we're gonna try to make your overall experience. Uh yeah, that that's part of consent too. We're we're I mean, Yeah. Yeah, well it, it's it, I mean consent is an extension of respect, you know. Uh, I, I, I'm not one who believes in the philosophy of, uh, of I just want to go home. I, I love and respect Mike Quasar, and I know that's his, <laughs> his, his line. For me, it's, it's you know, and, and I think I, I, I speak on behalf of, you know, all the creatives that we work with. Like, our motivation is to make great projects and to tell interesting stories and to spotlight and showcase talent and, you know, work collaboratively with the, the performers we do. And we want to do all of that within a respectful, professional, efficient environment. So yeah, yeah it definitely consent is like, a, it's, it's, it, it is a relationship. That's how we think about it. And it's one that is, you know, it, it, you don't check off. It's not a, it's not a checklist item on our to do that day. It really is like, like the backbone of everything. So I absolutely agree with him on that. Yeah, absolutely. When you, what have you heard about Feedback wise, um, for perform from performers, we, we we did touch on it earlier a little bit in the interview. I don't I don't mean to repeat myself, but just especially in these last you know two or three months, I feel like a lot of people are scared right now in the industry. Yeah, that's but there's just so much yeah, well, trepidation and all. I mean, have you have you heard back a lot of positive feedback on on what's going on on your sets? Yeah, well, we we really try, like I mentioned, you know, we we try to focus on action. So we, while we might not necessarily be 
super active in, in every single thread, we're putting that same energy towards just really trying to, to lead by example. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we always appreciate having those relationships um, that we can lean on to provide us with a like, good, honest, transparent feedback. And um, I feel really like, you know, the, the one thing that's, that's sort of missing or like the next step just, just uh, in our industry is, is to be able to kind of um, rally behind some of these standards, you know, so, so we don't, it's, it's interesting, you know, we're not, we're not really active in, in a lot of those conversations right now, which of course is, is a positive sign, but it's also a sign that you know, I wish people knew more about what they should expect yeah. as a standard. And, you know, I know we're, we're not the only company that, that is doing stuff like this. There's a, a number of great companies that are really, you know, putting the same level of effort into uh, how they manage consent uh, as we are. And, and I, I hope that talent are able to know that, that there's that, that also, you know, like wave of change is just more and more people getting behind the same good idea. And, you know, even being able to offer probably the best points of feedback that we get is when talent reach us, out to us and ask if we could give them blank copies of our consent deck so they could use it in their content trades just as a template. Or, you know, if they could, you know, reference it if they were talking to another company that maybe they felt, you know, could, could implement some better measures. That to me is actually... The, the, the best form of feedback because it does mean that the word is getting out. And I think, you know, part of, you know, what's great about even having this conversation is it allows people to, to learn maybe a bit more about what should be the baseline standard. And hopefully it will inspire others to, um, to expect of any company they're working with or any content trade, because I think, you know, obviously one of the big shifts that's happened over the last few years is the, you know, uh, talent pool has grown exponentially. More and more creators who might not even work in the studio system are working together. So, a lot of the standards that we we should expect from studios really can positively influence what to expect just from business to business creators as well. So, I'm I'm hoping that you know more of more of the good examples of work being done can also get some airtime so that it can help influence everybody should be doing this and what can we learn from each other to do better and that's that's what's important i mean the adult the competitive business i mean whether it's between performers or studio to be the best but this is an area where everyone has to be on the same page and and, and really cause i mean especially um well, brie i think that's that covers it now if, if there's anything else you'd like to chat about i'd, I'd be happy to to give you the mic but um i you know i, I was a great um you know, description of what's going on in your sets and the feedback I've heard has been so good. You know, you've got the consent and sexy shirt on and, uh, you know, yeah, I think born done differently is another shirt that you, that you wear at times. And I know you're uh, living up to both of the, those uh, sayings. Yeah. Well, consent is sexy, you know, and, and I, I'll end by saying, you know, uh, this is my, my stock message, but I'll, I'll repeat it every time, you know, as, as, um, you know, as an industry, we have tremendous influence over, you know, people's perceptions about sex and sexuality. And a lot of people look to our content as, you know, sources of information or sources of influence or ideas or peaking curiosity. So the more that we can integrate consent, not only into our production standards, but even into the context of our films and our shoots, that is having that is leading by example, not just within our own industry, but within society at, at large, and helping to educate adults on how they could bring that into their own lives. So you know, consent is sexy. The more of us that can get behind it, the better. Absolutely. All right, Brie. Well, thanks so much. I'm looking forward to, to seeing you. Thank you.